This is the second part of the video and in this part uh, we're going to look into making a tapered uh, core for the bow and for this particular one I'm using this piece of ash. The actual dimensions of this etc are going to go into more detail when we look at actually making one of these bows but just for the purposes of showing you how the sledge works and how to set it up um, we have this ash here it needs to end up 10 mil in the middle and it needs to end up 2 mil at the end and that taper needs to start about 25 centimeters out from the center of the handle okay so to do that to achieve that we need to set the sledge up slightly differently first thing to do always 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 is to take these little tables out here and just give it a brush as the um, sawdust builds up inside of that it can knock the table off one way or the other and this will give you like a wedge shaped um, thing and your bow is going to bend all over the place when you when you eventually come to tiller it so it's a good idea to keep that clean now the first thing is I have a number of these tables and they're all different sizes this one is the same length as the taper which I want in this piece of ash now the taper is going from 10 millimeters down to 2 millimeters so the difference is 8 millimeters now we're going to take these little pieces of wood here's a little piece of plywood and we're going to stick them in the top end of the sledge this is just to raise the top of the sledge up by 8 millimeters and if we put that in back in there we see at this point it's flat at this point it's raised up but before we do that we need to set the machine to the 10 millimeter depth and the way we do that is we can just put this piece of ash into it it'll probably be too high right now because we've been working with that hickory yeah that's far too high so we're going to undo the locking nut take the table down quite a bit like so now we want to put this in it's still a little tight there so we'll take it down some more There we go. So now we want to take that back up to a point where it's just nipping. Just before really it starts to nip the ash. There you go. So the ash can move freely just touching the drum. So what that means is that the drum is now set to that depth. This ash, by the way, I've already taken a little piece off this with the band saw. So the tip there is currently about six millimeters and the middle is the 10 millimeters. But we want to take that right the way down to the two millimeters. So we can take the sledge back out, take the little chocks, the little packing pieces, put them back in there, like so, and put the sledge on. Now, we're gonna put this plate in the back here to support the the laminate and we want to put this laminate in the same face up that we've already cut on the band saw that wants to lie on the sledge and the tip of the laminate wants to be level with the end of this table and to keep it there because if it were to move then obviously the tape is going to be different, you know, it's, it's going to bite it at different points. And we don't want that. We want the, the taper here to be a smooth, gradual taper. So to prevent it from moving around, we're just going to clamp it onto this end 
of the sledge, like so. Just make sure again that that's in place. Now, when we put the machine on and put that through, what's going to happen is that it's going to take off the wood here and it's going to stop taking off wood by the time it gets to here. That's still a little bit high, we're just going to have to press that down with a hand. And it should only take one go through, really, if the thing is all set up properly. Again, just put it there like that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start the machine up, I'm going to put that through. Once we've got that right, we would then just flip the thing round, leave the machine set the same, put it through again. And then you're going to have both limbs tapered exactly the same. What sometimes happens whilst you're doing this, I'll just get something to demonstrate this. Let's say, let's say that is the, uh, the middle of the laminate. I would generally leave that a couple of mil uh, wider, deeper, than it actually needs to be. Because as the drum is coming down, it may leave like a little, a little curve out there. And we can always sand that other piece down with a flatbed sander to get it uniform. Um, another thing, whilst you're putting this through, it is crucial that the sledge doesn't do this. So the best way I find to do this is to put it in so that there's enough here to get your hand there. Keep it flat on there, keep it flat here and put it through. We should have one, maybe two passes through the machine and we should have a laminate at that point. So now let's uh, put our money where our mouth is. Just make sure that's tight. And let's see if it works. So we're going to put the machine on. Hoover on. Whoops. Hoover on. Machine on. Here we go. Okay, so as you heard there, it wasn't quite biting in the middle, the thing slid through much too quickly. And at the end here, we've still got quite a ways to go, that looks like about 4mm to me. So I'm going to take this table up, just a touch, definitely lock it in place, we don't want it sliding back down. And we're going to run through that again. It's a very slow and careful thing. Take all of it there, make sure you don't hit the drum with your hand, obviously, you know. Um, we've got that there. Now that was better. We could maybe still do with one more. I just want to check that. We're just going to check the uh, depth of that at the end. Okay, that's still seeing it's about four mil at the end there, so I'll just check it in the middle, see what we've got in the middle here, if we can. There we are. Yeah, we've still got plenty in the middle, we're still over about eleven and a half there in the middle. So we can afford to take that up just another little touch. Tighten it up. This will be the last time through for that. If it's around the three mil mark. That's fair dues. We're going to leave, as I say, a little bit of a uh, little bit of wood left on, just in case we need to do some tillering uh, at the end of this. So I'm going to put this one through, and then we're going to turn it round and put the other one through, and they will both be the same. This bevel thing here has occurred, and then I will flatten that off just on the flatbed sander. So here we go. When I'm going to do a video on how to actually make this style of bone, we'll go into a lot more detail about the dimensions of this, um, how it's put together. This is actually a splice put together, a splice joint in the middle. 
we'll go into all of that and then how to glue it up and how to finally tiller it um, in another video but in this one I just want to show you the sledge the machine and how they work in conjunction with each other point you want to be very careful when you're taking this back out its tendency is going to be to throw itself back out and again maintain it with the with the run of the table if whilst you're taking it out if you do this or if you do that you're definitely going to end up with a hollow in there well I'm going to say that's okay that looks good to me so we're going to take the clamp off we're not moving anything on the machine we're going to flip that round and put it in that way. And I'll quickly clamp that on. Like so. And that one's ready to go. This will take a little bit more slower push through the machine because obviously we have a lot more wood here. We're only going to take the one pass on this. It's going to be straight through but nice and slow, yeah? take a measurement on this and see what we've got yeah okay we've got 10.2 in the middle there and we've got just three at the far end now just I don't know if you'll be able to see this on this camera but at this point here see we want to take this section from here to here down on the bands oh, sorry down on the flatbed sander we want to take it down to exactly this level here. Then what we'll have is 10 millimeters. It's 10.2 here at the moment, just beyond that dip. Uh, we will end up with a laminate 10 millimeters in the middle and approaching the two millimeter section at that end. We can take that a little bit further down on the flatbed as well. If there's any lumps and bumps in there, and we'll take it on nice and smooth. So that is the. Um, these two things combined take a lot of the sweat out of making backing strips and tapered laminates for your boards. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>